Across the American heartland, endless oceans of corn stretch toward the horizon. To the casual eye, it looks like abundance. But beneath that green lies exhaustion. Year after year, these fields guzzle water faster than aquifers can refill. They demand fertilizer, pesticides, and constant intervention just to stay alive. Hidden among them, a humbler crop quietly rewrites the rules of survival. It doesn't tower as high, but beneath the surface, something extraordinary happens. Its roots sink deep, storing carbon, holding water, and feeding unseen life. This plant doesn't fight the desert, it learns to live with it. Its name is sorghum, and it might just hold the blueprint for farming's future. Domesticated over 5,000 years ago on the sun-scorched plains of Africa, sorghum evolved to thrive where rain was rare and the soil fought back. It was the backbone of civilizations across Ethiopia, Sudan, and Sahel. And for thousands of years, it delivered harvest when other crops failed. Now, in a world of rising temperatures and shrinking water reserves, this forgotten grain is being rediscovered as a tool for regeneration. Picture a Kansas field in July, the air shimmering, the soil cracking with heat. Corn leaves curl inward, stalks weaken, and reproduction grinds to a halt. But sorghum stands unfazed, its deep roots pulling hidden moisture from below. Some roots stretch more than six feet deep, anchoring the plant like living cables. When drought strikes, it simply pauses growth, waiting for the next rain to fall. Then, as the clouds return, it resumes growing as if nothing happened. It's nature's version of patience, refined over millennia of survival. The same endurance makes sorghum a cornerstone for regenerative farming. In regions where irrigation fails, sorghum keeps the harvest alive. But resilience alone isn't what makes it extraordinary. Because sorghum doesn't just survive tough conditions, it improves them. While most crops drain the soil, sorghum quietly rebuilds it. Its massive root network sheds organic matter as it grows. Each season, those roots feed soil microbes and create carbon vaults underground. Farmers call it a carbon pump. Scientists call it rhizodeposition. Whatever the term, the effect is the same, a steady rebuilding of lost fertility. In trials from Texas to Senegal, sorghum soils gained organic matter year after year. Corn, by contrast, left the same ground weaker with each rotation. This deep carbon storage doesn't just enrich farms, it helps the climate itself. Every acre of sorghum acts like a small-scale carbon capture system. It locks atmospheric CO2 into the soil where it strengthens structure and fertility. That's why scientists studying regenerative systems often start with sorghum. Its balance between growth and restoration makes it uniquely efficient. But even above the ground, sorghum continues its quiet work. Its dense canopy forms within weeks, covering bare soil from wind and rain. Where other fields erode, sorghum fields hold fast. During the Dust Bowl, farms that planted sorghum lost far less topsoil. Those that didn't saw their land literally blow away. The lesson faded in the age of chemicals, but it was never forgotten by nature. Sorghum's thick stalks and lingering residue protected the ground for months. Even long after harvest, they anchored the soil against the next storm. Below the surface, another miracle unfolds. Each root tip leaks sugary compounds called exudates into the earth. These exudates feed billions of beneficial bacteria and fungi. It's a hidden economy of trade where microbes return the favor by breaking down nutrients. The result is living soil, darker, richer, and more resilient every season. Ancient farmers in Ethiopia noticed it centuries ago. They couldn't see the microbes, but they saw the land heal itself. Each year after sorghum, the next crop grew stronger than before. Modern science now proves what they observed by instinct. Sorghum doesn't just use the soil, it cultivates it from within. This microbial partnership explains why sorghum needs fewer external inputs. While corn gulps synthetic nitrogen, sorghum uses what's already there. 
its roots and microbes work together to recycle nutrients efficiently. Farmers report fertilizer savings of hundreds of dollars per acre, and every pound of nitrogen not applied means less runoff into rivers and seas. It's a quiet revolution in how food is grown and how ecosystems recover, because when the land breathes cleaner, everything around it thrives. That includes the insects that pollinate, protect, and feed entire food webs. While cornfields offer nothing to pollinators, sorghum fields hum with life. Bees, wasps, and other beneficial insects feast on its abundant pollen. Researchers have counted more than 29 families of pollinators in a single plot, each one playing a part in the balance of the wider ecosystem. That biodiversity becomes natural pest control all on its own. Sorghum even helps itself, producing natural compounds called durin and tannins. These act like inbuilt defenses against many common crop pests. Farmers who grow sorghum rarely need chemical pesticides at all. The result? Safer fields, healthier workers, and soil life left untouched. Even the pests that do arrive are often managed naturally by predator insects. It's the kind of harmony industrial systems spend billions trying to replicate, but for sorghum, it's simply how it's always been. And when the rain finally comes, this crop does something remarkable with it. Instead of letting water run off, sorghum pulls it deep into the earth. Its roots carve channels through compacted soil, creating pathways for infiltration. What starts as rainfall becomes storage, moisture trapped where plants can use it. Over time, each sorghum season leaves the ground more porous and alive. Farmers describe it as turning concrete into sponge. In a changing climate, that simple transformation means everything. Better infiltration means less runoff, less erosion, and more resilience. It's the difference between surviving one drought and thriving through many. And as the soil strengthens, so too does everything living above it. Pollinators return, microbes multiply, and roots dive even deeper. This is how regeneration begins, not with technology, but with design. Nature's design, perfected by time and rediscovered by farmers. But sorghum's gifts don't stop with ecology. They extend to economy. In a world where one failed harvest can end a livelihood, versatility is survival and sorghum offers flexibility no other grain can match. Every part of the plant has value, from seed to stalk to leaf. Its grain feeds people and livestock, its stalks fuel energy production, even its leftover fibers can be pressed into paper or biodegradable packaging. In Africa and Asia, this versatility made sorghum a foundation of food security. Nothing was wasted, every harvest fed a chain of life. In the modern world, that same adaptability is giving farmers options again. Some grow grain sorghum for flour and feed, others plant sweet sorghum for ethanol. A single bushel can yield nearly 50 pounds of high-protein livestock feed. That means a farmer can harvest both food and energy from the same field. Few other crops can make that claim, and fewer still can do it sustainably. Even with drought shrinks grain yields, sorghum stalks remain valuable forage. It turns failure into flexibility, a lifeline for regenerative farmers. And yet, sorghum's story is about more than what it produces. It's about where it grows, the lands most others have abandoned. Sorghum thrives on marginal ground where traditional crops collapse. Saline soils, low fertility, erratic rainfall, it welcomes them all. That resistance has earned it a name across Africa and India, the camel of crops. Because, like a camel, it survives the desert by storing its strength within. While corn demands perfect soil and irrigation, sorghum asks for very little. It can even rehabilitate degraded fields simply by growing on them. Its roots open compacted earth, its residue returns organic matter each year. Over time, the dead land begins to breathe again. For regenerative farmers, this is the holy grail, restoration that pays. Every acre planted to sorghum becomes both a crop and a conservation tool. And as degraded acres heal, 
farmers find new opportunities. They can rotate sorghum with legumes to fix nitrogen naturally. They can plant cover crops beneath it, creating layers of living soil armor. It's agriculture reimagined, not extraction, but collaboration. And yet, for all its advantages, sorghum remains largely invisible. Walk through a supermarket and you'll see endless corn products, corn syrup, corn oil, corn starch, corn everywhere. But sorghum? It hides in plain sight, mostly as livestock feed or export grain. Part of the reason is marketing. Part of it is habit. Corn has the infrastructure, billions in subsidies, storage, and machinery. Sorghum never had that backing, but it has something far rarer. Independence. It grows with fewer inputs, less debt, and less ecological cost. As the world faces tightening water supplies and eroding soils, that independence might soon become its greatest asset. Farmers across Oklahoma, Texas, and Rajasthan are already proving it. They're harvesting reliable yields in years when neighboring cornfields fail. Their soil holds water longer, their costs run lower, and their profits steadier. Sorghum isn't a miracle, it's simply aligned with how nature works. That alignment is what regenerative agriculture has always aimed for. Less intervention, more cooperation with the living systems beneath our feet. Sorghum's success is proof that we don't need to reinvent agriculture. We just need to remember the wisdom that built it thousands of years ago. And that wisdom runs deeper than the roots of any crop. It's in the partnerships between plant and microbe, soil and sky. It's in the way drought teaches endurance and scarcity teaches balance. Farmers embracing sorghum aren't just changing what they grow, they're changing how they think. They're realizing that abundance doesn't come from force, but from balance. Each season, that idea spreads like the roots of the plants itself, quietly but persistently. And the more farmers who join, the more the land begins to heal. This is regeneration in motion, ancient, modern, and necessary. Sorghum shows that sustainability isn't just a word, it's a practice. One that depends not on scale or subsidy, but on understanding. Understanding that soil is not a resource, it's a living partner. And when we treat it that way, it rewards us with abundance beyond measure. Each acre of healthy soil holds more water, grows stronger roots, and captures more carbon than all the fertilizer in the world could ever add. That's what makes sorghum more than a crop. It's a teacher. It reminds us that sometimes progress means slowing down, to listen, to adapt, and to work with the land, not against it. And through that partnership, entire ecosystems can come back to life. From the microorganisms beneath our boots to the birds in the sky above. Sorghum feeds them all, directly or indirectly. It's a thread connecting soil health to biodiversity to food security. And for every farmer who plants it, that thread grows stronger. The transformation doesn't happen overnight, but it's happening everywhere. From the Great Plains of the US to the drylands of India and Niger, each seed planted carries the memory of survival written into its DNA. A memory that tells us abundance doesn't come from dominance, but balance. And it reminds us that the future of food might not be found in new inventions, but in rediscovering what ancient farmers already knew to be true. Because the truth is, the age of endless resources is over. The next era belongs to crops that do more with less. Crops that rebuild, restore, and remember what industrial systems forgot. Sorghum stands at the center of that transformation, quiet but unstoppable. It doesn't promise miracle yields, it promises stability. It offers a path forward for farmers facing drought, depletion, and debt. A path where regeneration becomes not an experiment, but a way of life. Across the world, that shift is already underway. In India's semi-arid plains, families are restoring soil once left for dead. In Kenya, smallholders are intercropping sorghum with legumes to double fertility. And in the American Midwest, regenerative ranchers are rotating sorghum into corn belts. 
Each example, a small defiance against the idea that farming must always take more. In this quiet revolution, farmers are the innovators, not the corporations. They are writing a new kind of success story, one rooted in endurance, not excess. The soil responds, the ecosystems return, and profits follow in balance. And yet, the broader world is only beginning to notice. For decades, sorghum was dismissed as a poor man's crop, unworthy of attention. But in the 21st century, it's becoming something else entirely, a test case for whether sustainability and profitability can coexist, a model for regenerative farming that thrives without exploitation, and perhaps a mirror showing us that the answers were never far away. They were rooted in the same soil we've been walking on all along. That's the paradox of sorghum. It hides in plain sight, a grain so humble that it's been feeding life for millennia without fame. Yet now, in its quiet way, it might help save modern agriculture itself. Because regeneration isn't about returning to the past, it's about continuity. The same sunlight, the same soil, the same rhythm, understood anew. If you trace the story of agriculture back far enough, it always leads here, to a balance between growth and restraint, between abundance and respect. Sorghum's resurgence is simply that story being retold in our time, but this time with better science and a deeper sense of urgency, because the clock is ticking and the soil won't wait forever. We stand at a crossroads where choice, not chance, will decide the harvest. One path leads to exhaustion, the other to restoration. Sorghum is the compass reminding us which direction still leads home. It points toward practices that work with nature, not against it. Toward farms that are not just productive, but resilient. And toward an agriculture that values long-term health over short-term gain. This is not idealism, it's adaptation, written in the language of roots. And the deeper those roots go, the stronger the future they create. So the next time you drive past a field of corn reaching for the sky, look closer at the shorter plants beside them, quietly standing their ground. They may not look like much, but they're rebuilding the foundation beneath our feet. They're teaching us that resilience doesn't shout, it whispers. And if we listen closely, we'll hear an ancient lesson rising again from the soil that healing the land is not just possible, it's profitable, and that the path forward begins by planting what we once overlooked. Because sometimes the smallest seeds hold the greatest revolutions. From its deep African origins to its modern revival, sorghum has carried one message across millennia. Adapt, don't deplete. It's a message the planet desperately needs to hear again because the way forward might not lie in conquering nature, but in learning, once more, how to live within its boundaries. So now, we leave you with one question. If the future of farming is already growing quietly among us, will we have the wisdom to nurture it before it's too late? Tell us what you think. Could this forgotten grain help reshape modern agriculture? Share your thoughts below and join the conversation on regenerative solutions. If you enjoyed exploring this hidden side of farming, don't forget to like this video and subscribe for more stories that dig deeper. Because the next revolution in agriculture won't come from labs or machines. It'll come from understanding the land itself. And that's what we explore every week here on Stella Eureka. Until next time, Keep your curiosity rooted in the ground. This is Stellar Eureka, signing off.